Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, here we are again. We say, uh, God bless everybody this morning. And good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone that's in our sanctuary today. And certainly uh, to those uh, in the Facebook audience, we bless the Lord again with you. And it's just good uh, to know the Lord. Hallelujah. How do I know? Well, it was one day that I didn't know him. I knew all him. Yes. And that there's a distinct difference in knowing the Lord and knowing about him. Yes. Glory to God. So as you can tell, uh, I'm always glad uh, for the Lord on, and being on his side because I'm always smiling. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, not that, that I don't sometimes... Uh, have something that I could be frowning about, but you know, I learned something a long time ago and that it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. Yes. Amen? Yes, it does. So this is a good day to have a good day and as I always say, if every soul saved the soul then every soul would be saved. Well, so what do you say? What do you say we get busy? Yeah. And those that are us that are busy, what do you say we get busier? Okay. Hallelujah. God bless you. And at this time, receive none other than my loving wife, the pastor of the Miracle House of Prayer, right here at 604 East 38th Street, Houston, Texas. None other than Pastor Lois G. Coleman. God bless you. Yeah. Shout! 
How he's yet proven yes. to the world that he's God. Yes. Now we know there's trouble everywhere. Yes. But you know what? I'm so glad to know that Jesus is everywhere. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm so glad to know that all of the things that's going on in this world, Jesus is yet in control. Yeah. Hallelujah. The world don't believe it. Hallelujah. But the world is not going to receive him. Amen. They have to come out of the world in order to receive him. Amen. That's me how I know. I was once there. Amen. But thanks be unto God that I came to a little church on East 38th Street yeah. back in January of 1968. And they weren't afraid to tell the story that you need to be saved. Talking to me. Yeah. And I thought I was all right, you all. Yeah, I did. I thought I was all right. But little did I know that when I said yes to the Lord, oh, what a transformation. Yeah. What a conversion. Hallelujah. Amen. We are so grateful. And today, we are grateful to be able to stand before you and to share with you what the Lord has put on our heart this week. Uh, amen. Even though we enjoyed the holiday, we enjoyed our family, yeah. the Lord yet was dealing with me concerning the Word of God. Amen. And you know, only what we do for Christ will last. Yes. Only. Hallelujah. And so today, uh, the 26th, amen, of November, and amen, by the way, uh, amen, uh, this was uh, the day that my father was born, uh, November the 26th, 19 and 18. Amen. You say, well, uh, amen, a lot of people, amen, they forgot about when their parents were born, amen. Uh, it's not even, uh, you know, relevant to them, amen, but not me, it's relevant to me, amen. So grateful uh, that the Lord blessed me, they, my mother and father, both, uh, 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 they passed away at 51, my mother and 57, my dad. So, uh, amen. But you know, uh, I, I'm not really sad because, uh, amen, I find that Jesus is a burden bearer in a heaven of shadow. Yeah. Amen. And I, one reason I say that, uh, amen, is that as you well know, uh, we, uh, amen, uh, have the uh, service for uh, Bishop Sutton, uh, amen, Gregory Wayne Sutton, um, uh, amen, the past Saturday, uh, amen, but uh, a young man that lived with every fiber is fine. I'm going to share with you today, uh, today being our uh, 38th lesson, uh, amen, in our uh, Think Big, amen, series. Uh, and today we want to talk about the anointing. The anointing. And you know, I'm so grateful that when you hear the voice of the Lord, uh, just walk in. Amen. The Lord is going to pay us according to what our work shall be. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And I know uh, sometimes... Uh, People don't feel like that, uh, you know, we should uh, preach on this uh, certain things because this is modern day times. Amen. This is modern day times, but guess what? It's still Jesus' time too. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so uh, many times uh, I do want to say that I need to come in made by uh, some people that uh, uh, Jesus was just an ordinary man. And, and I said, well, 
you know, we really have to critique that to find out exactly what they mean. Uh, because now, in the sense, he was an ordinary man because he was human. That he did walk the face of the earth. In the flesh, he had a fleshly body. But other than that, there was a, another thing that you could think of that you could identify him as just an ordinary man. I mean, nothing else other than he was born of a woman. He was born in the flesh. Glory to God. Amen. But other than that, he was past ordinary. My Lord, way past ordinary. Amen. First of all, to begin with, uh, there was not another baby that was born of the Holy Ghost. Not another one. You will not find it in the Bible. And if there's anybody in this society that's telling you that they had a, a baby and a man didn't put the seed there, they're lying. I, I, I want to put it straight forward. Glory to God. Now, amen, the seed that, that was planted in Mary was a holy seed. It was done of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I know somebody already said, well, what about John the Baptist? Amen. Oh, yes. He was the forerunner of Christ, but John the Baptist was conceived completely different than Jesus. John the Baptist did have an earthly father. In other words, he was conceived, amen, with the earthly father. But now Jesus had an earthly father, Joseph, but then Joseph did not uh, plant the seed for Jesus. He was the earthly father in, uh, after Jesus was born. Then uh, Mary and Joseph raised him uh, as a baby, as a child. Glory to God. Amen. So, you all, ain't not when you hear somebody say, Jesus was just, he was just an ordinary man. Don't argue with him, but ask him how they mean that. Amen. Just ask them how they mean that. And uh, if, if they, uh, amen, uh, want to uh, say, well, he was just an ordinary man. He was born like everybody else. No, he was not. He was not born like everybody else. Let's get in the Word. Study the Word. Amen. See what the Word say. Amen. So that uh, brings me to uh, amen, our lesson on today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And in the midst of my message, amen, I'm saying, God bless. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Sister Winifred Guyton, amen. I'm so glad to see her. Amen. She's always uh, on the uh, teleconference on Tuesday night, but amen, being in person, uh, amen, uh, makes me want to holler. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Uh, so today, uh, we want to teach a while uh, on uh, the anointing. The anointing. And the reason that we want to teach on the anointing because it was very important in Jesus' life. And scripture tells us how important the anointing was in his life. And so, if the anointing was that important in Jesus' life, that means it's important to us also. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The anointing, the, the word of God says that the old yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let 
let me read, let me read. Uh, if you would go with me, verse 2, uh, the book of Isaiah, and Isaiah being uh, uh, the major prophet, Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. And let me read uh, these Old Testament scriptures uh, because you see, this was uh, speaking of Jesus. Uh, Amen. Long before the New Testament. And that is Isaiah 61 and 1 says, uh, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. In that second verse, Isaiah 61 and 2, says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Now keep in mind that we are talking about in Old Testament times, in the book of Isaiah, speaking of Jesus Christ, that one that a whole lot of people call an ordinary man. Hallelujah. But here it is. Before he was conceived in Mary's womb, before, uh, amen, he was born before he walked the face of the earth. Here he is, the prophet Isaiah, hearing the voice of God and speaking of things that will come hundreds of years in the future. Glory to God. But nevertheless, I'm glad that the word of God is true. Hallelujah. Every jot, every tell of the word of God is true. And the word of God says, amen, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now, this is Isaiah that's writing here, but amen, it's referring to the spirit of the Lord God is upon Jesus. And he said, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Amen. So, amen. Before, amen, Jesus was born, amen, uh, uh, his ministry was already set in order. The thing that he would do in this earth was, was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah long before he was conceived in Mary's womb. And it, it went on to say, He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Amen. See, God, amen, knew what He had in store for His Son. Glory to God. Amen. He said, To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Hallelujah. Amen. All of this was spoken that Jesus. Amen. Would do, amen, before he was born. Hallelujah. Oh my God. And I got news for you. Amen. God is all knowledge. And before you were born, he knew what he had for you to do. Each and every one of us, glory to God. And what happens uh, when we are anointed, amen, it means uh, that we have the spirit of the living God uh, on the inside of us to carry out the will of God in our life. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good when we are anointed, when we go forth to obey the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a terrible thing. Amen. To have a preacher to preach without the anointing. It's a terrible thing to have a choir 
to say will not be anointed. Now, now don't get me wrong now. There, there are talents, amen, uh, that uh, they can go forth in, uh, glory to God, uh, but the anointing is that that destroys the yoke. Glory to God. Amen. I'm so glad that, uh, amen, here at the Miracle House of Prayer, down through the years, amen, uh, we, under Pastor Crawford, uh, Pastor Jennings, amen, go Pastor Bell, amen, we have had uh, uh, anointed music, anointed musicians, dedicated uh, musicians, glory to God, dedicated choir members, amen, that, amen, that uh, stayed down. And then kept obeying the Lord, glory to God. And the anointing was upon their life. Hallelujah. Don't you know that the anointing is that that destroyed the yoke? Glory to God. Amen. Uh, yeah, amen. You can preach under the anointing. Amen. And you don't even have to have a prayer. Uh oh. You can speak the word under the anointing. And deliverance can come. Why? Because it's not you. You're not the one. Glory to God. You've been used by God. But you're not the one that's bringing deliverance. You are a vessel. But it's the anointed that destroys the yoke. Glory to God. Amen. I'm so glad that I have seen many, many people that was just sitting in the service. Glory to God. Amen. And the word was going forth. And the house, the glory cloud just filled the house. Hallelujah. And as they sit on their seat, glory to God, they just began to speak in tongue as the Spirit give utterance. Nobody laid hands on them. Glory to God. Now don't get me wrong. One way of receiving the Holy Spirit is according to the word of God, laying on the hands. We're not fighting that. Glory to God. But also, we need to recognize the power of the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing is that, that destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. You can be sitting in the service. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word can be going forward, and that anointing can saturate your body, clean out that cancer, clean out that diabetes, take that headache away. Glory to God. Take on uh, Versailles. Amen. Out of your left heel, man. All the right is out of your right heel. Come on. Glory to God. Why? Because of the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I, I knew this was going to happen. I knew I was going to get excited. So now I'm not apologizing. I'm just going to move on. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Oh my God. And certainly the anointing. Is proclaiming liberty to the captives in the hour that we're living in now. There are many people that are captivated by sin. Glory to God. Many, many. And the anointing will destroy that yoke of sin. It will destroy that yoke of iniquity. Glory to God. It will destroy, uh, amen, that, that broken hearted, amen, uh, anything that will come to separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Hallelujah. This, we are talking about the anointing today. Hallelujah. Amen. I, 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 not about Bishop Coleman. Glory to God. Bishop Coleman is the vessel. Not about Pastor Coleman. Pastor Coleman is the vessel. Glory to God. But it's the anointing that does the work. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Come on. It's the anointing amen, that will bring people out of lust. It is the anointing that will bring people out of going uh, in the back door at 2 o'clock in the morning to somebody else's house. The anointing will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, you're getting quiet on me now. Hallelujah. Stay right there. That means that you're listening. Hallelujah. And the opening of the prison to them that are found. The prison. I, uh, call a 
with uh, some prisoners in the Huntsville Union. Amen. And uh, the ones that I, I write, they admit that they did wrong while, uh, you know, they were free. That's why they're in there. Now, we know that there are some that are in the prison that were not guilty, but they were found guilty. Glory to God. I, amen, thought about uh, a little incident uh, last week that uh, as I left church that Friday night, amen, I was in the Escalade, and I, I, I guess when you own an Escalade, I guess you're never supposed to drive down a dark street, undoubtedly, because the police will really met me, met me head on, and uh, on the airline, and when he stopped me, he says, uh, uh, "The." Uh, well, I stopped you because uh, your headlights were on bright. And I said, sir, I said, they're not on bright now, and I haven't touched them. And he said, but they were on bright. So what I did, I don't argue with police. Even when I was a teenager, I had better sense than to argue with police. Uh oh. Oh well. But nevertheless, nevertheless, he went on and wrote me a citation. Thank you, my sister. He wrote me a citation, and uh, it's good to be in the right place at the right time. Thank you, woman of God. And nevertheless, uh, I began to think about it, and I said, well, what I'll do is just, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, call in and pay the ticket, and, but when I called in, they said, well, now, you know that you have to plead guilty before you can pay this, and I said, well, I thought about it, and I said, well, I'm not guilty. But I'm going to get this over. And I went on and uh, had the pastor pay it for me. And I thought about it. I said, you know, I want to make sure that everything is clear on my record with Jesus. Because uh, I pleaded guilty. But I wasn't guilty. And to me, that was an untruth. Now, most people will just go on and say, oh, you know, that's that. But no, uh, I said, now, Lord, I came to the Lord. I said, I pleaded guilty when I wasn't. And I just want to be sure that I, I have a clean slate with cheat. I'm not worried about that, you know, look. Uh, uh, money that the city got, but I said I just want to be clear with cheap. And I, I said, Lord, and I repent for uh, claiming guilty when I was innocent. And I know most people don't even think about nothing like that. Glory to God. But Amen. You see, I want to be so serious with the Lord. Glory to God. Until I want everything covered. Amen. And then when, when I get up to speak, I don't want nothing guilty on my soul, my heart, or nowhere else. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And and, and now, uh, we didn't pay much attention to it until now that every time we get in a dark space, those lights automatically come on. And, uh, you know, and I thought about it, I said, well, I said, see, uh, maybe this is what he saw. When I got in that dark spot, they came on bright, 
I knew nothing, didn't know it. Amen. But nevertheless, glory to God, uh, we, we, we didn't get all bad out of shape with the police officer. Amen. Why? Because I carry the anointed everywhere I go. Yeah. And the anointed keeps me when I'm behind the steering wheel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Now, uh, so, sometimes I have to admit that, uh, amen, pastor has to slow me down a little bit. Amen. I, I have to admit that. But when she slow me down, I, 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 I slow down. Amen. Because, see, I, I, I like to drive, you know, like about five miles over the speed. Amen. Not, not that I'm always in a hurry to get there. Because I'm retired. And, amen. I don't have to be in a big hurry because I love to leave at any time. Amen. But, you know, it's just one of those little things, you know. Uh, amen. Then, uh, amen. If, 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 uh, the pastor don't correct me, amen. I got a Renzo on the other side over there. He don't correct me. Glory to God. Amen. So I, I, I got it from both sides. Amen. I got it from two sides, and then Jesus is watching me. Amen. So I got I, I got to roll straight. Glory to God. Amen. So amen. But I, I'm talking about the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the anointing just makes you want to do right. Hallelujah. Oh yes, it does. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, all right. Now, let, let, let me read, amen, a little bit further. Uh, now, in the book of uh, St. Luke, uh, the fourth chapter, the 18th verse, amen, we find uh, the same words that Isaiah spoke, amen, but amen, but we find them uh, in the book of St. Luke, the fourth chapter, and the 18th verse. Amen. And Dr. Luke recorded these words. Amen. And of course, these are the same words. Amen. In uh, Isaiah 6 1 and 1. Uh, amen. It's recorded in uh, St. Luke. But amen. Now, Jesus is saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Talking about God. God has anointed Jesus. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And the 19th verse says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. See, Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of the living God, being anointed. Glory to God to do a work. Hallelujah. Amen. And listen, when we are anointed, amen, we are anointed for a purpose. Glory to God. See, the anointing follows us. It leads us. It guides us. Hallelujah. Amen. And when we go and pray for people, by all means, uh, be anointed. Take the anointed with you that deliverance might come. Whatever they need. If it's a broken heart, take the anointing with us. Glory to God. Whatever it is, sickness, disease, take the anointing with us. Glory to God. That we might be covered while we are praying for sicknesses, praying for deliverances, that the captives might be free. The anointing is that that destroys the yoke. Let me, uh, amen, go to uh, the book of Acts now. The 10th chapter and the 38th verse. Glory to God. And here, uh, amen, of course, Luke is the writer of the book of Acts. And, and in 10 and 38, he says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. My God. Yes. My God. Yes. Jesus. Yes, he was Jesus. The anointed one. But God anointed him with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And I got some scriptures I'm going to read. 
Amen. To let you know that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. You mean Jesus went about doing good? Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why, that's, that, that's why it's good for us to go about doing good. Hallelujah. Amen. We all just want to do good. After being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with the mighty burning fire, yeah. we all are, amen, just want to do good. Yeah. Why? Because we are all anointed. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. There are some people just are anointed to do good. Amen. That's what Jesus was. Jesus was anointed to do good. Hallelujah. You see all in scripture. He went by healing the blind eyes. That was good. He went about healing the lame. That was good. Hallelujah. But he also was anointed to do so. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Let me read, amen, a little bit in St. John, the first chapter, and we're going to read a couple of verses in 32nd and 33rd verse. St. John 1 and 32. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a devil. And it abode upon him. Him who? Jesus. Glory to God. The Spirit. In other words, uh, that's a big S. That means the Holy Ghost. I saw the Spirit or the Holy Ghost descended from heaven like a dove. And it abode upon him, upon Jesus. The 33rd verse. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water. Yeah. See, John came to baptize with water. That was John baptism with water. The same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. John wanted to Amen. Wanted to make it plain. Amen. Jesus is the one that is going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and not me. Hallelujah. Amen. See, John was in a position there possibly uh, had he said that I'm going to baptize you with water and the Holy Spirit. That might have been somebody that didn't know any better that might have believed it. But he didn't come for that purpose. Glory to God. He came for the John baptism only. The baptizer in water. Glory to God. And he, uh, amen, was even privileged enough to, amen, to baptize Jesus, amen, with water. Hallelujah. Oh, but John did not have the privilege or the honor of baptizing no one with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Reading, amen, just a few more scriptures. Amen. We know that you are writing them down. Uh, amen. So you can study them even more uh, during this week of your Bible study. Let's go to St. Matthew in the third chapter. And we are talking about the anointing of Jesus Christ. St. Matthew 3 and 16 says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, uh -huh, went up straight Wait, out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody said he was just an ordinary man. This was not. Just an ordinary man. And the ordinary things did 
not just happen to him, but they were they were uh, extraordinary things that happened to him. Why? Because he was extraordinary. Glory to God. Nobody else, amen, uh, could go to the cross, amen, and uh, give up his life for the sin of all mankind. Nobody else, nobody else even tried. There was nobody else brave enough to even try. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Why? Because that, amen, uh, responsibility was uh, pointed towards uh, Jesus Christ from Old Testament time. It did not just the New Testament, but from, from, old, from Genesis. Amen. Old Testament time. It was ordained that he was already anointed, in other words, anointed and appointed by his father from the beginning of time, glory to God, that he would be the one that would go to Calvary and suffer death for the entire world. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Nobody else, no matter how anointed anybody else got, they could not take his place. Glory to God. The anointing upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Read in that 17th verse, in that same third chapter of St. Matthew, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Uh-uh. He was not just an ordinary man. Because you will not find it anywhere else in the Bible that God said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Glory to God. That set him apart from being ordinary. He was extraordinary, not ordinary. Hallelujah. Ordinary man could not have suffered what he suffered for the sins of all mankind. Not an ordinary man. An ordinary man would have died before he got to Calvary. All of the, uh, amen, the, the, the beating, the, the, the beating on the back with the cat and nine tail would have killed somebody. Glory to God. The, uh, amen, piercing in the side would have killed somebody. The crown on the head where all the blood came gushing out would have killed somebody. Killed him, Jesus Christ. Amen. Why? Because he left record. No man take my life, but I lay it down for the sins of the world. He was anointed to die for you and me. He was anointed to die for the sins of the entire world. Glory to God. He was not just an ordinary man. Keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to tell somebody that's been believing that all of their life and have been quoting all of their life. Oh, he was an ordinary man just like me. No, sir. He was not. Glory to God. Number one, each and every one of us was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Each and every one of us was born of a man and a woman. Even John the Baptist, who was born with the Holy Ghost, according to the Word of God, but he was born of a man and a woman. Zechariah and Elizabeth. They came together and produced John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Talk about the anointing. Talk about the anointing. Make sure you write all of these scriptures down. So if you, if you need to, amen, call me up if you didn't get them all written down.
so I can make sure that you get them, that you can go back and you can read them and uh, study them and see, uh, amen, that I had heard all of my life that Jesus was just an ordinary man. But as I began to read deeper in the scriptures now, I see that he was more than just an ordinary man. Because an ordinary man uh, could not have taken all of that that he took. And an ordinary man uh, could not have done all of that that he had done. And to let you know that an ordinary man, uh, a man, uh, could not do that that he's still doing. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Oh my, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark. Amen. The first chapter. And the 10th verse. We'll read one verse. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open. And the Spirit, the Spirit, a count of this which means Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Like a dove descending upon him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, and I'll tell you, this has been, uh, amen, so amazing until, uh, amen, I thought about, uh, amen, how uh, Jesus, when, uh, amen, when he arose and uh, he gave the disciples the uh, great uh, commission uh, amen. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Amen. He gave the disciples, his followers, the great commission. Glory to God. In other words, uh, he told them to go do, go do what he did, what he had done. Hallelujah. Go into all of the world. Into all of the world. Baptizing them uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The great commission. Hallelujah. But it takes the anointing. If we're going to carry out the great commission, we're going to have to have the anointing. We're not going to be able, uh, amen, just to walk in and, uh, and say, well, I'm just an ordinary man. But, but no, uh-uh. We are going to have to have the anointing. In other words, the spirit of the living God is going to have to live on the inside of us. For us to accomplish, uh, amen, these uh, feats, amen, that the Lord uh, has ordained for us to do. Glory to God, amen. And I want you to know that, amen, we can do it. Amen. We can do it, saints of God. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, we can do it. Come on, tell them, through the anointing. Come on, tell them, yeah, just the anointing. Come on, tell them again, just the anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just, just the anointing. Just the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on 
Saying to you, we are marching to greater.